I'd like to pay tribute and celebrate the life of my dear friend, your brave officer, and our collective hero, David. It remains the greatest honor of my professional career that David asked me to write our book, Tango 190. More important than that, of course, I made a friend for life. I'm just so sorry that his life was cut so terribly short. For the trust, warmth and love that Kath and David and Ash and me are placed in me for welcoming me into their lives, I'm truly grateful. And from the first moment with David, well, apart from the scars of service, mentally, we were inseparable. Tears and laughter, laughter and tears. We were able to finish each other's sentences. Alone, without my assistance, he was an incredible and captivating narrator of his own story. Together as one, we visited some very dark places. He could talk for hours, and sometimes he couldn't talk at all. One of us would break down, but it was normally me. In public, David kept up the front for the Blue Lamp Foundation, for Northumbria Police's integrity, and for himself. He loved the limelight, and it gave him a purpose to get up in the morning. In private, he ultimately ran out of reason to do so. He used to explain to me the thorough work of his colleagues throughout the trial of the cowardly accomplices who were jailed last year. My superiors walked down a very long corridor of information, leaving no stone unturned, he would say. One by one, they make sense of it all and they shut doors behind them, ensuring there'll be no escape from justice for those cowards. Doors slam shut in their face. Of course, David walked down an even longer, darker corridor himself, trying to make sense of it all. And in the end, I guess, we closed the doors back on him. You have to ask yourself what happened in his mind in that last hour of his life that meant he felt all those doors were shut forever. Between us, didn't one of us have the key? Today's always been my worst fear since meeting my friend for the first time. As we sat there time and time again talking through the events of that night, what David used to call the tink of the tap on the glass of the patrol car, and then his virtual death inside the vehicle, only dragging himself back from the brink on that occasion through images of Ash and Mia floating in front of him against a soundtrack of an ambulance siren fading in from the A69 and the A1. I knew then that he'd seen too much. As I said, I feared this moment would come. When I look back at the nightmares I used to have after a session with David waking up bolt upright in the middle of the night, imagining myself in the car next to him, then arriving in tears for my former breakfast show on the radio here in the Northeast, what must he have felt? It's to his credit that he fought so long. Of that night in July 2010, my friend looked danger in the eye and was not found wanting when asked to make the ultimate sacrifice, displaying bravery in a split second that collectively most of us will struggle to match in a lifetime. Congratulations, David, on every day that you lived after. You really were playing on well into added time. Through the trial, David walked the line of policeman and public victim, giving exemplary evidence to the judge. He said it was the best he had ever heard. Yet breaking down too, as that victim, in the gallery and at home in the evenings. Night after night, we talked it through, 
I could see how, whilst he believed 100% in the evidence, the voices in his head still left him with unfounded fears that they would walk from justice immediately or in his lifetime. If you've read the book, you'll know that it also portrays Dark, uh, David Stark's sense of humour. He was desperate to do Dancing on Ice, you know, and that's serious. He often laughed after the trial at some of its ridiculous detail. That was typical David. There's a passage about chicken wraps and a badger's hat that proved even David could see the light side of the dark side, when, of course, he couldn't see at all. David's legacy lives on in the Blue Lamp Foundation, which he founded selflessly with his twin, Darren. Darren, treasure the memories of the good times you had in the Adelaide Sun. You knew him first in life, and you knew him last. Take pleasure in that rather than discomfort. And it gives many of us great comfort that when we hear you talk, we know David is still with us. Even from Adelaide, you still share genetically the Rathband pause when you speak and timing, the intonation and the laughter. That may help us psychologically delay and deny our grief, but equally, if the voice of David Rathband is very much alive and kicking, I'm going to live two lives at the same time from now and never waste a moment in honour of this great man. And for me, it would be a beautiful irony, job done, if legislation was passed so there was no need for a Blue Lamp Foundation. Rathband's law, ensuring that all injured servicemen in the line of duty should not want or wait for financial security and emotional support from now until the end of time. My thoughts are also with the six servicemen whom we lost this week. I hope everything is being done for your families. It's ridiculous. In the last few days, we've had to do deals and call in favours to fund and accommodate Darren and his family. If you've donated previously or will do so soon, perhaps rather than sending flowers, Thank you, wherever you are in the world. If you are a public figure who has stood by David sincerely in support or as a cynical photo op, your time is now and your duty is to make sure there are no empty promises and hollow words. Make the ethos of the Blue Lamp Foundation a political reality. To the people of the North East, I know David found a home here and his life became a success by relocating to Northumberland. He would love the fact that you turned out today and adopted him as your own, as you did me too. David only wanted two things from me, though, of course, I'm left with a lifetime of memories from the short time I knew him. I struggle to accept he isn't here. I see him every day. Firstly, David wanted to go on the record that his story outlive him and remain unchallenged as the definitive account of what happened. He was overjoyed with his book. Secondly, he asked for accountability. So to Northumbria Police, Ali and Chris, the family liaison officers, I know David was never a job to you. Thank you. Alison, we spoke the week before David returned. You know how concerned I was for him. Even in Australia, I know you were watching for him. And to the force, unprecedented and testing circumstances, I accept but I urge you now to tell the whole story of the mistakes that night and finally come forward and say publicly, sorry, David, we should have avoided what happened to you. You owe that to your fallen officer. <coughs> to the media, 
most of whom have behaved respectfully. I ask of you one final thing. It's time to lose the headlines that always link my friend to the name of the coward who took his sight. My friend is called David Rathband. Everybody knows his name and how he became a hero. Let his name, not his attacker, be remembered for generations to come. We must move from the shadow of that evil and remember him always for his good in society rather than the wickedness bestowed upon him. To beautiful Mia, I will never forget the story of how you first saw dad in, your dad in the hospital the day after your birthday party. That's the passage in the book I shed more tears over than any. He also told me one day you'd said you wanted to be a policewoman. That would make him proud. And to Ash, thank you for coming, both of you. Your father would often tell me of his guilt, that he knew he'd asked you to step up to become the man of the house. You're doing him proud too, and I know you will continue to do so. You were at a turning point in your education when all this happened. You, of course, have now been to the University of Life more than anybody. He adores you both. But I never hear anyone in public say, how are David's children? My own son Sam often used to talk to David on the phone. He knows if he looks in the dictionary under courage, it simply says Rathband. To beautiful Kath, few of us really understand the full extent of your turmoil and pain. Except to say, your friends, your mom, and I know you've carried yourself with dignity and stoicism. I love you and David both equally, and I know you both loved each other until the end. I want to say on the record what a tremendous woman you are. I'm embarrassed that you've been there for me when I needed a friend. And let's not forget the toll your own professional life must take on you. We must now respect and look after this lady in a way that we fell short with David. And finally, of course, the last word goes to my friend. However you knew him, PC Rathband, Rathers, Tango 190, David, my twin, my son, my brother, dad. David, you changed my life so much and there won't be a day when I don't think about you. It was the greatest honor to give you a platform and the greatest tribute that so many read our words. As a society, we owe you a debt of thanks. So many people in life pass through our worlds, here today, gone tomorrow. David may be gone today, but he's very much here in all my tomorrows. Rest in peace, my friend. I love you, and you're safe now. Thank you.